I am not a number. I'm a free man. Sorry. Uh, this is just a diss. Welcome. Uh, we talk about Blu-rays here. And um, mostly movies, but sometimes television programs. And in this case, one of my favorite television programs. And that is uh, The Prisoner from 19, the late 1960s. And uh, it is just one of those things where you... If you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. This is just a really, really impressive show um, developed by actor Patrick McGowan and I think his producer. Um, McGowan, just a spectacular actor that has been in tons of stuff, uh, you know, from way back. And he he's just a guy that I've always been impressed with, you know, like... He did a lot of stuff. He did some early British films. I just saw uh, one of his great early British films the other day. Um, uh, what is it called? All Night Long. Basil Dearden movie. Great stuff. Uh, but he's like the warden in Escape from Alcatraz. He's in Silver Streak. He's in um, uh, Scanners, obviously. Uh, tons of movies and just an actor that I've always loved. But this is, to me, his Citizen Kane in that it's not only a great performance from him, but it's also just a really wonderful, wonderfully conceived idea for a show and one that he was so passionate about and you know directed some episodes and wrote some and it's just clearly a a real labor of love project. And so when you get an actor like of this caliber that gets behind it, a a, a show like this, it really becomes impressive. So I should have said at the top, I'm talking about the imprint films, brand new complete prisoner series box set, uh, Blu-ray box set. And, uh, this set, this show has been available on Blu-ray a couple times before. There's an A and E Blu-ray from want to say like 2009, and then a more recent set from Network, I think, in the UK. Uh, but this seems to be the all-inclusive set. Uh, the one that has, I think, basically everything that's been on these other releases and then more. Uh, plus, uh, restored in 2K, uh, the elements, uh, the episodes have been restored in 2K from the original 35 elements. Now... I know there's some folks that say my Blu-ray from A&E looks great. And I would say you're right. It does. Uh, I had that set. I sold it, uh, and ended up getting this. Uh, I think this looks better. I didn't do an A to B comparison, but it's stunning how good these episodes look. Now let's talk about the show. Um, the website here says he is a man without a name and whose background is wreathed in mystery. Now a captive in the most intriguing, menacing yet beautiful prison in the world, a very lovely village, but how to escape the prisoner is one of the most challenging and unusual series ever filmed for television devised by series star star. Uh, yeah. Series star Patrick McGowan. The prisoner resists every physical and mental effort to break him stories of one man's tremendous unflinching battle for survival as an individual in the macabre world in which every move is watched by electronic eyes and in which all his neighbor neighbors quote are suspect. Uh, the series theme themes are incredibly relevant today as they were in 1967. Now that's not giving you the exact overview of what this is. This is a show which has one of the coolest, uh, opening sequences because it's an extended sequence that they do every episode which shows McGowan as... Well, okay, let's back up. So McGowan was uh, an actor in the 60s, and he sort of came to prominence in part because of a show he did called Danger Man, which was, um, as I understand it, you know, a spy show that was, I think, created because of, or at least in conjunction with, the popularity of... uh, James Bond, uh, or at least it's right around that time in the sixties when, you know, these kind of characters were very popular sixties spy stuff. You know, if you had, uh, you had your, 
your James Coburn as um oh man I'm blanking on on his thing but you have a bunch of different um a bunch of different spy type shows and knockoffs of James Bond and uh and stuff like that happening in the 60s it's this big uh confluence of spy stuff our man Flint Flint uh is is the guy I was trying to think of um so that's one thing that's happened. I mean, just tons of there's female spy stuff. There's danger diabolic. There's all kinds of crazy things happening in this period. Now, so danger man is the show he does. He's doing an episode of danger man at one point and he comes across this village. Um, and I forget where it is. If it's like Wales or something. Um, but it is, uh, Yeah, Port My- Marion is a folly uh, tourist village in Gwynedd, North Wales. It lies on the estuary of the River Dwitterd in the community of... Oh, no, no, I can't even pronounce that. Um, but it's a beautiful village, and it seems isolated. It looks like it's an island, but it's not. It's, it's a, I guess it's like a um, sort of peninsula or something. But it is so incredibly interesting and neat looking. And as I understand it, McGowan's filming a, an episode of Danger Man there, which is included in this set, and I'll get to that later. And I think that's where the idea for the prisoner starts to form in his head. Now, he starts to develop it with you know this producer, and they, they know that they have to film it in this village because that's essential, and it is. And it's one of those where the village is without it you don't have the show uh but the idea is that at the beginning of the prisoner uh this is all done you know without dialogue we see you know an angry magoon pull in in this really cool sports car to this building i guess it's supposed to be mi5 or something like that he's a spy and he goes in and talks to his superior they're having some kind of yelling argument he's like he's basically you can see he's like i'm out i'm done and he goes home, he gets gassed and knocked out and he wakes up in this isolated village where he is now a captive. And uh, the idea is that he is, because of his involvement with, you know, his spying, he has all kinds of information and the village folk want to try to get him to divulge secrets. And he is very good at not doing that. Uh, he is given a number. He is number six. Uh, the guy who runs the village or gal, it changes from episode to episode is number two. Everybody has a number. Um, and there is a crazy white balloon that chases people and grabs them if they try to escape. Basically they're on an Island, so you can't get out. It's, it's just meant to keep you in. And it's meant to be this sort of mental test to try and get you to divulge secrets and, and that's sort of the thrust of the show, but it does so much more than that. And it's such a fascinating show that I love it. And um, I just love his performance. I love him as this character. I love the outfits. I love the way the city looks. It all has this sort of uniformity to it. Uh, I'm not doing the best job of explaining, but trust me, it's a great show and truly one of my favorites. And this set is easily one of my favorite releases of 2024. Uh, absolutely you know, just, just fantastic. Uh, so let's go through this. Um, the stuff you're getting here, you're getting uh, two multi-disc sets of The Prisoner, right? You're getting uh, three discs, I think, in each. Yeah, three discs in each of these. I'll put one of these up here so you can look at it. Um, and... The um, then you're getting a 120 page collectible booklet. I, I would not call this a booklet, this is a book. Uh, and this has some great essays in it. Patrick McGowan's Fallout, um, 
you know, that's okay. Let's see here. Lou Grade knew that to keep the talent that Associated Television needed to expand its audience, it was often necessary to indulge that talent with their own projects that were outside of the company's usual output. Uh, in 1960, Lou's brother and fellow impresario, Leslie, wanted to, tr- to attract the new in-demand talent of actor-singer Anthony Newley to the great organization. Lou offered a deal with ATV that included six peak time shows in which the entertainer could do anything he wanted. The result was the surreal and abstract wanderings that formed the strange world of Gurney Slade. Um, and it sort of goes on to talk about, in April 1966, 38-year-old Patrick McGowan, a New York-born actor of Irish Catholic immigrants, had been a key player in ATV's export success for seven years, following a n- notable stage career with his role in a TV presentation of Clifford Odette's The Big Knife, had attracted the attention of Lou Grade, and then deputy managing editor, uh, director of ATV, the company that operated uh, commercial television. This is how he gets Danger Man, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Anyway, great uh, thing to have this nice book included here. Uh, so I'll just go through everything. Uh, it has all 17 episodes on five discs, and then we have an additional disc with extras. So you have um, the 120 page book featuring essays by television writer and historian Andrew Pixley and press story information from the original studio files, original as broadcast mono audio, plus 5.1 surround music and effects audio tracks. Uh, Don't Knock Yourself Out, feature-length documentary on the making of the series, including archival and newly recorded interviews with key cast and production personnel. That's from 2007. That was on uh, the other discs. In My Mind, a feature-length documentary about director Chris Rodley's experience attempting to interview Patrick McGowan about the series from 2017. That is fascinating. That is really interesting to see Patrick McGowan interviewed and how he sort of takes over the shoot and uh, really good stuff. Um, uh, Let's see here. Uh, Patrick McGowan, 1983, a 30-minute outtake from one of Chris Rodley's full interview sessions with McGowan. Um, then we have Catherine McGowan, 2017. Patrick McGowan's daughter, Catherine, speaks candidly about her father's work and legacy. Uh, then we have audio commentaries on multiple episodes. Audio commentary on arrival by production manager Bernie Williams and film librarian Tony Sloman. Audio commentary on the chimes of Big Ben by writer Vincent Tis- uh, Tilsley. Audio commentary on The Schizoid Man. These are the episode titles by director Pat Jackson. Audio commentary on The General by director Peter Graham Scott. Audio commentary on Dance of the Dead by production manager Bernie Williams, film librarian Tony Sloman, and editor John S. Smith. Audio commentary on A Change of Mind by uh, writer Roger Parks. Um, Audio commentary on Fallout by music editor Eric Meivel and editor Noreen Ackland. Text commentaries on all 17 episodes. These just little text bits that come up while you watch the episodes, which are very interesting too. Uh, early edits of the episodes Arrival, Restored in High Definition, and Chimes of Big, D- Big Ben, which they use best surviving material. Arrival, Early Edits, Restoration Comparison. Filming arri- r- Arrival, Keith Rogerson um, captures the filming uh, of this story on his standard 8mm camera during a visit to uh, Port My- Myrion. Uh, Port Marion on 9th September 1966. The Prisoner Puzzle, Patrick McGowan interview from TV Ontario from 1977. Um, you Make Sure It Fits, interview with editor Eric Maval. Maval. Now we have three new interviews here. A new interview with the interview with the Schizoid Man guest star Jane Marrow, uh, interview with Checkmate guest star Annette Andre, and interview with Checkmate guest star Darren Nesbitt. Those are the three new things that have been added. Um, But it does include, I think, everything else from the other releases. Don't quote me on that. Uh, Peter Wingard in the Pink Prisoner interview featurette, the Prisoner Behind the Scenes interview with production manager Bernard Bernard Williams, Many Happy Returns 50 Years On locations featurette, Leslie Gilliatt, Reese, 35mm Transparencies, a series of photographs of Port Marion in uh, 1966 by producer Leslie Gilliatt, Port Mary in 1939, 16mm Kodachrome, amateur footage, prisoner video companion, home video featurette, for the love of, archival memorabilia featurette, ITC promotional trailer, uh, and then series archival vault material. We have original series and episode trailers, original ad break bumpers, photograph, montage, footage used in arrival, textless titles featuring three variations on the theme music, film trims, and select episodes, 
Uh, number six, number six, German title sequence, 1967 press conference photo gallery. I mean, so much stuff, right? Uh, just packed, like a, a truly spectacular um, set. Now, on top of that, we have a bonus disc. It's a one disc set, but, and it's not complete, but we get uh, Danger Man. Now, I don't think this has been included in other releases. Select episodes from Patrick McGowan's genre-defining espionage series from between 1959 and 66. In HD, view from the villa, an episode from the 25-minute series with scenes shot in Port Marion. Now, that's the one I think he was shooting when he was most inspired to want to do The Prisoner. Without that episode, maybe we wouldn't have The Prisoner. Uh, new in HD, The Nurse, an episode uh, from the 25-minute series. New in HD, Fair Exchange, an episode from the 50-minute series. Uh, in HD, Colony 3, an episode from the 50-minute series with a narrative that closely aligns with themes in The Prisoner. I forgot there was actually that as well. Um, no Marks for Civility, an episode from the 50-minute series. Audio commentary by writer ben Brian Clemens and director Peter Graham Scott from uh, View from the Villa and the Nurse. New, uh, The Danger Men, expanded interview documentary featuring producer Peter Price and writer Philip Broadley and stuntman Mike, uh, sorry, Frank Maher. Production rushes and opening titles, UK ad breaks and bumpers, US secret agent title sequences. Wow, it's a lot. It's a lot of stuff um, included in this set, like I said. And it is truly one of my favorite things I've seen come down the pipe in a little while. Uh, it is just a lovely show and one that, if you're not taken with it, I'd be surprised. If, you're, if it sounds at all interesting, you know, the idea of James Bond or spies or, you know, what happens to spies when they... Um, go out to pasture. Uh, this is a very interesting take on that world. And I know that McGowan had general ideas for the show, but uh, I looked up a list of episodes that are the sort of the general consensus of the episodes and the order that you should watch them in uh, that were the core episodes. Because there's 17 and some people, and maybe even McGowan himself, admit there's some filler in there. I think it's all interesting. But the episodes Arrival, Dance of the Dead, Free for All, Checkmate, The Chimes of Big Ben, Hammer into Anvil, Once Upon a Time, and Fallout were the main ones that were recommended if you wanted to watch the core group. Um, because number two changes every episode, um, it doesn't really matter if you watch them in exact order. Uh... It's it does, but like some it doesn't. I, it's hard to explain, but truly one of the great shows in the 1960s and one of the great shows ever, as far as I'm concerned, and one of the great sets uh, out there now for you to grab. Um, you can get this one through um, uh, imprint through Via Vision, but you can also get it from places like uh, Diabolic DVD, Orbit DVD, and some other importers. Uh, Amazon will probably have it but it's going to be a little bit more expensive than it would be from those others like Diabolic. So anyway, high, high recommend, absolute must, looks great, great extras, great show, The Prisoner. Uh, thank you so much for listening, and I will talk to you soon. Bye-bye.